South Sudan's president, uh, Salva Kiir, has threatened to form a unity government without the opposition leader, Riyak Mashar, if he does not return to the country soon. He issued the warning during prayers to mark one year since the signing of a peace deal. The agreement ended a five-year civil war that killed tens of thousands of people. It also sets a November deadline to set up a joint government. Meanwhile, a report released by the investigative organization, The Sentry, is calling for the West to do more to tackle corruption in South Sudan. A report by the group, which was co-founded by actor George Clooney, alleges financial links between global companies, individuals and governments with South Sudanese politicians and military officials. The BBC's James Copnell went to meet Mr. Clooney and co-founder John Pendergast. Governments can do it, uh, sometimes individuals can do it, and that there is a, that, that this is not an impossibility, that there, this is not inevitable, that there are, some, there are some real actions that can be taken that can make a big difference. So let's say the South Sudanese, Sudanese people might not get much from their government in the current situation. So you'd suggest what in this case? These people who profit from human misery are extremely vulnerable in one way. They use the international financial system to move the proceeds of their financial crimes. When they do that, as we've talked about a lot, when they do that in US dollars, when they do it in pounds, when they do it in euros, they become subject to the regulatory authorities and the banking systems and any money laundering uh, efforts. And we can work directly with governments and with banks to uh, close those avenues of illicit financial flows off and actually freeze and seize those uh, assets. The tricky thing, it seems to me, is that the, the, the whole world is involved in this in some way. Sure. You're talking about people from, and you might be able to put pressure on the U.S. companies, for example. Our job is to try to continually keep pressure uh, and find uh, levers that we can use. This it has been by far the most effective one we have found. Uh, it's the old follow the money, but it's real. The whole system has been established in South Sudan to loot. And if you can start to create a consequence for looting, you're going to, have, you're going to make a difference. You're going to start to impact the calculations of folks that are, that are making decisions about how they're going to run South Sudan. Are you not also going to need, though, buy-in from Kenya, from Uganda, countries in the region, sometimes where the money goes, sometimes who may disagree with the conclusions you're coming up with? The Kenyans are terrified if they get a bad grade from the Financial Action Task Force, their whole banking sector is going to suffer. So suddenly they're like, okay, yeah, maybe we're in business. Some of our politicians are in business in league with these folks who are stealing from South Sudan. But our entire future financial sector is at risk if we keep doing business. We don't want to take business away in any shape. We just want to take the corruption away. And the best way to take the corruption away is to make it unpalatable. If you talk to South Sudanese businessmen who aren't you know, on the take, if you talk to investors who want to do it clean, they have no chance because it's the folks who are bringing suitcases full of money and putting it under the table and who, who are uh, hijacking these particular processes. Uh, uh, there's no transparency. There's we, no financial accountability. Let's say this all works. You cut out the financial <laughs> dodgy dealings and networks, and that's a, you know, it's a big if, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a lot of problems in South Sudan that yeah. doesn't solve ethnic problems, the tensions, the political competition, and so on. This is a small part of a very big problem. Mm -hmm. Except that the, the amount of money that's coming in, from the, and the kinds of corruption, you know, corruption is the driving force for these atrocities. You, you take away that giant piece of the puzzle. You're watching BBC Focus on Africa. It's now time for some sport.